one. Hi, everybody. I am apologize for being a little late here. Um, I'm Char Carol Fisher, and um, I'm an internship supervisor in Kansas City um, at for Cornerstones of Care, which is a residential facility. Um, we have two residential sites, uh, and we work with adolescents. Uh, ages 12 to 18 who are with us for many reasons. Most of them are custody in the custody of the state. So they have, their parents have lost um, their rights as custodians. So they're wards of the state and they come to residential facilities for various reasons. Um, we have clients that are um, on the spectrum. We have clients with severe emotional behavior um, disorders. And they can be with us anywhere from three months to two years. We have some clients who've been with us almost two years. So um, I do want to say that sites are important when you are <laughs> thinking about going into this because many music therapists are moving, I would say, into more a specialized field. I mean, you know, we like to say we're jack of all trades, but that's not really the case. I don't think anymore. I mean, you're working with residential, so you're working with, um, you know, trauma-informed care. We're working with clients who are very difficult. Um, the skill level and maturity level, I expect, is very, very high. And so it's not easy to get into this internship. And so I think sometimes, I don't know, sometimes there's a disconnect between students thinking that they can apply to a site and, um, their chances are high because they're just interested in it. And you also have, you have to have a, a skill set that's specific to that site. So I would suggest for students to, I allow um, people who are interested in my site to come and shadow or um, come and see how we work. And sometimes one visit isn't enough. I'll say, hey, you can come visit. You're welcome to come. I know that's not the case for many internship directors because you're, you know, there you could be in Florida and be interested. You can't just <laughs> hop over and hop on a plane and go to Florida, you know, if you're in Missouri. So I'm a university affiliated site. So sometimes it's easier for the um, universities that I connect with because they're, you know, anywhere within a two or three hour drive that they can come and visit. So if you can't do that, you can ask your internship director um, or supervisor, site supervisor, for a Zoom call to talk to them more. I think there's some, some fear there for students to approach internship directors and supervisors, but I would strongly suggest you do that to get a feel for how you're going to get along with that director. You're, um, ask them their approaches, their philosophies, um, because that might mean everything. You might, what you see on paper, when you read an application packet, I have a pretty long packet, it's like 10 pages and it's, as thorough as I can get, you can read and say, oh, this is awesome. And then you come and visit my site and you're like, oh my God, I am not prepared for this kind of work. So um, I would suggest if you can, you know, if you're interested in a, a local site, that's great, you can go visit. Um, but then you also have to think internship directors might have 20 applications, you know, at one time. So applications are extremely important your words don't just fill out an application for an internship site the night before it's due. I, you know, I'm looking for grammatical errors. I'm looking for how you're writing because I have to narrow down a list of 20 to a list of six. And I'm going to pick the best. So you need to have your A game on when you're writing your application. As far as musicianship, you need to also find out what is expected at that site because um, I, I'm a site that you know, working with adolescents, you have to be very well versed in pop music. You have to understand hip hop and rap, um, you know, rock. You need to be a little well versed in all these types of music. We're not looking for perfection, but you need to be able to sight read. You need, and if I put a book in front of you, you need to be able to understand how to read a bass line and comp chords. So the best way to do that is first to find out what that that um, internship site is looking for as far as musicianship and practice as much as possible. Um, I'm, I send out a list to those applicants that are interested a couple weeks before so they can get ready um, just to, to review the list 
and I want to see if they, they've, they're able to <laughs> remember this is an audition. So you should pick what you know the best and work on that um, and not just show up and say, oh, yeah, I practiced this yesterday. Um, I don't know if that helps, but does anybody have any questions? I know that I, I was just... your intern. Um, and yeah, Alex like... survived. <laughs> yeah, I survived. Um, and my musical skills were not um, the most amazing musical skills in the entire world, but you and I sat down um, during supervision and really hammered out what needed to be worked on and how we could best do that. Um, so really just making sure that you're communicating with the people that you're working with and that your supervisor is not there um, to make your life any more difficult, but you do have to communicate um, what you need. I'll, I'll just throw something in uh, on top of that too. Um, looking at Montana's question, she specifically says she worries that she doesn't have the musical skills for what that internship might want. I'll just say it's okay if you don't have the skills that one internship might want because there's gonna be another internship for you that you will have the skills for. And again, just like not all internships are created equal, you know, everybody on this Brady Bunch screen right now has different, you know, strengths and weaknesses and, um, and not every music therapist has the has the same level of ability. So you're, it's again, it's a, you know, it's a goodness of fit test. You're looking for that internship that is going to be seeking someone with your abilities and vice versa. So if you don't get the first couple of internships, you know, there'll be, there'll be one that's the right fit for you. So um, I just go back to that idea of don't get discouraged if your top choice is not the one that you end up with. While we're on this topic of music skills, are there any settings where piano is highly utilized and valued? Um, so one setting, I talked a little bit about this in my presentation today, is the new idea that's up and coming about performance-based music therapy. So with that and then all the clinical direct service work that I do, I utilize piano a lot. And I don't, I don't only, I not only like accompany people, so I had to learn the skills on how can I become an accompanist that supports a client and that gives the client the musical cues that they need. Um, but also being able to teach the principles of a piano to someone else. So in performance space, there's a little bit of that. And then utilizing it to your advantage when you have it. Because if you know how to use it, you might as well. So if you have a piano in your session room, use it for a session. A, a lot of people, maybe because you're in a hospital, like you may not have access to a piano. So it has become like this cliche of an underrated, no one ever uses the piano but know what you're doing because there may be a situation where you don't have a guitar and you're put in a room and all you have is a piano and you have to be able to do all of your session on a piano instead of a guitar because that has happened to me before. Okay, for those of you that do have um, internships, can you give us a brief layout of what your internship interview audition looks like? I guess I can speak on this because I did a few. Um, one of them, it was talking for like an hour and then performance based for like an hour. So it was, you know, it was pretty long, but it was mainly just to get the whole person. And then another one I had, it was, uh, I shadowed for like the morning, talked to the supervisor for about 30 minutes, played two songs, one on guitar, one on piano, and that was it. So it could look completely different from site to site. And just like Sher Carroll and uh, Dr. Bedard's were saying is reach out to those supervisors and kind of get a feel for what they want. Yeah, I know um, like a narrative report of my inter internship was um, I decided that I wanted to apply for internships all over the country. So I only applied for one in the Midwest region and all the other ones were in all of the other regions because I was like, why not? And I ended up in Mid-Atlantic. Um, but because of that, my, a lot of my internship interviews actually happened over Zoom back in whenever, 2019. Um, so I did a lot of my internship interviews, which were face-to-face -face over Zoom. And then I sent a lot of recordings of myself singing and then did also some live music over Zoom. 
Yeah, I would also speak on that. So I've contacted all of the internship sites that I'm currently applying for. And I also saw that question and Dr. Odarzik answered it. But um, for also anything more than that, if you're doing and working all these other applications, you're going to become really overwhelmed. So try to focus in on just a couple at a time. Um, but I've contacted all the sites that I've been reaching out to already. And a lot of them that I was planning on going to in person are moving to wanting to just see me over telehealth, actually, rather than Zoom. I'm going through and making sure that if you are currently applying for those things, talk to those people because you might want to download a different kind of software, something that they'll want to use. And I know for me personally, I'm nervous about the whole process. So I'm going to want to practice with it a little bit beforehand and see how it sounds and get to know it. So if you are currently at that phase, I would recommend reaching out to people because if you were able to travel to them and you're close, but you might not be able to anymore. So I would reach out and see if they want to do it over Zoom or telehealth or a different kind of pre recorded way for interview and then i would also say um it sounds like a lot of people have talked about like the actual process of um, that interview but um your interview process starts when you send that email to the supervisor saying hey i'm interested in your site um so when you send that email make sure that it is as professional as it needs to be um, and then any interaction following that is still going to be a part of that interview even though it's not formal um, the interactions that you have in between um, will be noted. Yeah, I think that's good, Alex, because I, I know I've, I've had encounters with students who might be interested, but I, I will say that there is a shift in what I've seen in how students interact with people. <laughs> um, and I think it's important to assert yourself, come up. If you see someone you're interested in interning with at conferences, especially introduce yourself. Hey, I'm interested in your site. Can you talk to me? I've heard all kinds of stories about students like, I'm, no, I'm afraid to talk. I don't want to come up to her and say anything. I'm like, you're, that is important because I will remember your face. Like you send me an email and I'm like, oh yeah. Oh, I saw, I came to your presentation at Conference Track Girl. I'm like, oh great. But I remember those students who come up to me and say, hey, Track Girl, I heard about your site. Can you tell me a little bit more? That means a lot, especially if you are, I heard someone saying that they were kind of introverted and shy. I mean, we're music therapists, so you're, I mean, shyness <laughs> and being able to come up to people is two different things. You can be a shy person and work through those, those things in your internship and as you grow as a professional, but it's important to be able to look someone in the eye and give them a handshake and say, hey, I'm such and such. I heard about, you know, I like what you're doing. That means more to me than just an email. If you can make those personal interactions. If you see me at a conference and say, hey, Jack Carol, I'm, I'm, I like what you're doing. Tell me more. Then I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. So make sure you are able to make those personal connections with people if you can. Um, yeah. I just wanted to piggyback on that, Alex. And then this is for sure Carol and Dr. Radarzik. So this is a concern about the current situation. Um, being a senior